Hi and welcome to a new 3D4 tutorial. This video demonstrates a solution for reconstructing a lens breathing shot using an anamorphic lens if no grid shots or lens files are available. In our 3 tutorial anamorphic distortion and lens breathing this was done very roughly by hand. The approach here is using scripts within 3E4 to get far more precise results. Throughout this demo we will use extensively an exciting script to adjust lens parameters called Adjust Curved Vertices. Some infos up front about the project. There are already 2D tracking points. Survey is available as well. Ok, let's start. At first some preparations. Here we have a shot which clearly was filmed with an anamorphic lens. In our case, the lens has an untypical compression ratio of 1.5 to 1, so let's set parameter pixel aspect to 1.5. Further, in this case we know the footage was filmed with a super 35mm camera. Therefore, film back height is 1.188 cm. Perfect, have a look at the scene. We see a focus pull with typical lens breathing effects caused by the anamorphic lens. Having a closer look, we clearly notice the deformations of the head. So, we know what to solve, but how do we solve this? First, distortion model of course has to be set to anamorphic standard degree 4. Next, since we notice the camera does not move throughout the entire shot, we can give 3D force calculation core the hint of a fixed camera position. Now, let's calc all from scratch. We see, surprise, surprise, deviation is far away from being acceptable. The first parameter to be adjusted is focal length. We have no clue about the correct value, so set this parameter to adjust and adjust it within parameter adjustment window. Since we do not have any hints, it's unlikely a fine range will be sufficient. So change that to white, then hit button adjust. Cack all. And here we go. Deviation changed pretty much. Of course, it's still way too much. For a proper lens adjustment, we should include more parameters. A good approximation doesn't necessarily need every parameter the lens model provides. Degree 2 parameters are more than sufficient for our project. So let's add them to parameter adjustment. And since it's presumable the lens wasn't mounted perfectly onto the camera, lens rotation as well. All parameters should be set to adaptive all. Again, adjust. Over time we see deviation is decreasing pretty well. Not bad. Calc all. And voila, we are on the right way. Well, just considering the deviation value. Looking at the deviation curve, we quickly see a strange curve which is far away from an ideal noisy flat line. It seems there are systematic errors and further adjustments, the way we did before, won't solve this. To cut it short, static distortion parameters won't help us here. We do need dynamic distortion. But how to convert our lens to dynamic? Just setting it to driven by focus distance only won't do the trick. We need the previously calculated values for each parameter within Curve Editor. The trick here is a nice little Python script. At first, Let's close parameter adjustment, then with curve editor open and all distortion curves selected, let's select edit create dynamic distortion keys. Here we go. The values of each parameter were set as a CV in their respective curves. What's next? As we saw while scrubbing through the footage, the focus pull caused a lens breathing effect. Again, this resulted in that obviously incorrect deviation curve which could be solved by animating both squeeze parameters. Where to place vertices is defined pretty clearly by deviation curve. We see three frame positions with turning points within the curve. There must be the cause of our incorrect solve. 
but since we do not know where to place a CV on the distortion curve along axis X, matching with the current frame, we need another way than creating them by hand. For such a case, 3 d 4 Release 4 comes with an elegant way to create keys on distortion curves. Switch to Distortion Grid Controls, drag the frame slider approximately to the frame of the first turning point, then open Python script Animate Distortion. Here we see a requester containing sliders for all distortion curves of the current lens distortion model. We notice as well that the values of each parameter of the current frame are already set correctly. Moving the slider of a specific distortion parameter automatically creates a CV at the current frame position with a defined value. In our case, to compensate lens breathing effects, curve squeeze X and squeeze Y has to be adjusted using additional CVs at these three turning points. Ok, move the slider knob of both squeeze parameters. And here we go, new control vertices on both curves. Next, this has to be done for the other two turning point positions. Great, that was pretty easy and fast, right? It is a fantastic tool. Since these CVs at the start created previously are irrelevant for the upcoming adjustment, simply delete them. We notice creating keys with this script automatically changed lens parameter dynamic lens distortion to driven by focus distance only. Further, curve focus distance has become a ramp depicting the frames of the scene, as seen on axis X, as well as by the value. For example, frame 100 equals a focus distance value of 100 cm, frame 20 a value of 20 cm and so on. The result is very pleasant for us. Distortion curves do now behave as pure animation curves. Axis X here is now displaying frame numbers. Alright, back to action. These keys within both squeeze curves now have to be adjusted, since we just set them very roughly. It is quite likely their values are incorrect. But how to adjust specific vertices of a distortion curve? Before we start, let's clean up parameter adjustment window. Now, please welcome script adjust curve vertices. A simple yet immensely useful script for adding all selected vertices of a curve within curve editor to parameter adjustment. Therefore, let's select all six vertices and open the script. In the appearing requester, parameters of the selected vertices are displayed, as well as text fields for editing the adjustment range. Here we can leave them untouched. Ok, and we see all six vertices, all three of each squeeze parameters, were added to the pane. For a more detailed explanation of the command lines and additional infos, Please see our feature at what's new on 3DE4 R4. To start, set all to adaptive and let's go. The adjustment procedure is now adjusting the Y coordinates of all selected CVs. Their positions along axis X remain unchanged. We see the best result is decreasing pretty fast. Great! Before transferring all best results to their parameters, let's keep an eye on both curves and how they will change after clicking button Transfer Parameters. Indeed, quite different than our manual attempt. Let's see how this will affect our wrong deviation curve. Calc all. And yippee deviation improved from circa 6.8 pixels to circa 1.6 pixels. Even better is, the curve's shape is already pretty close to the ideal noisy flatline. For further improvement, let's adjust the other distortion parameters we already used previously as well. In our first adjustment earlier, 3D4 tried to compensate both previously missing squeeze parameters with selected degree 2 and lens rotation parameters, leading to slightly falsified values. Therefore, adjusting degree 2 
Lens rotation and squeeze together will correct this. But how to adjust static parameters within a dynamic lens? The answer is again script adjust curve vertices. Since each of these curves also have a single key, we can add them as well to parameters adjustment like we've done before. One little info, while adjusting ball squeeze parameters, focal length should never be adjusted as well. Modifying squeeze X and squeeze Y is equal to a focal length modification. Therefore, all three parameters would mutually compensate, leading to nowhere. Okay, select all degree 2 curves and lens rotation, then their vertices. Finally, open the script. All parameters with selected vertices are now displayed in the requester. But wait, both squeeze parameters shouldn't be added a second time. This would mess up our adjustment pretty bad. This happens since the script adds all vertices selected within Curve Editor, regardless if they were added previously. So please be careful at this point. For a clean start from scratch, cancel to close the requester, then select all parameters, deselect all CVs, and select again just those of degree 2 and lens rotation. Open the script, and we see everything's fine now. OK, adds them to parameter adjustment. Again, adaptive all and finally adjust. Adjusting 11 parameters will take some time. Depending on your machine or the size of your trillion CPU network, now is the time maybe to quickly watch a cat video or doing laundry or whatever errands you might have. Oh good, the procedure's finished. So, calc all. Deviation improved further. Again, great. But there are some annoying peaks within the curve we should get rid of. Let's select both squeeze curves and have a look at them as well as at deviation curve. We see the biggest peak is around each curve's second CV. Another peak can be found on the curve between the last two vertices. Pretty clear? With these few keys we just get a very rough and inaccurate curve, so we have to refine them by adding additional CVs. Where to create vertices is pretty good indicated by the peaks. So at first, two CVs approximately where deviation is increasing, further two more circa at second peak position. Finally, set them all to linear. Very good, now we have to adjust all of them. Remove all parameters from parameter adjustment, then deselect all other vertices, then select all 10 CVs of the squeeze parameters. Add them to parameter adjustment, again adapt default, finally adjust. This procedure will take much less time than before. We see the best result found by the procedure is further improving. Transfer parameters and we see all CVs form slightly different squeeze curves. Next, calc all, here we go. Well, in general this deviation curve is pretty close to our ideal curve. If we still want to improve further, since a real-life focus pull of course does no linear interpolation, one approach is smoothing all tangents, then adjusting again the CVs of smooth curves. At first, let's set all vertices to smooth, then as well their tangents. Next, adjusting. One last time, hit button adjust. Deviation still improves a bit more. Transfer parameters. Calc all. And boom! Fantastic! Deviation curve and both squeeze curves are looking great. A little note. We shouldn't make rocket science out of interpreting deviation curves. 
For this project, the demonstrated approach fits quite good. For other projects, for example with less tracking or no survey, sometimes simply placing CVs evenly on the curves for adjusting might do the trick. Feel free to be creative. Let's have a look at the final results. This was how we started. Due to lens breathing, all things can be seen in the footage deformed pretty much when changing the focus. Especially a closer look at the head shows this clearly. Looking at the undistorted footage, this deformation was corrected marvelously. How much the footage does have to be distorted to achieve this can be seen well at the right and left edges. Perfect! We solved the task. We were able to compensate lens breathing effects caused by an anamorphic lens without having any grid shots or many information about the lens. We just used all tools that are shipped with 3D4 Release 4. In particular adjustment script adjust curve vertices. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.